This lecture is about partitioning, acknowledgement, the book Designing Data Intensive Applications. Agenda partitioning, range partitioning, hash partitioning, secondary index partitioning by document, secondary index partitioning by term, partition rebalancing and request routing. Partitions. We break the data into partitions. The main reason for wanting to partition data is scalability. Partitions and replicas. In this diagram, what we are showing is that each node acts as a leader for some partitions and follower for other partitions in case of replicas. Let's consider node 1 where it is a leader for partition 1 and followers for partition 2 and 3. Also, please note that partition 1 in node 1 is a leader while partition 1 in node 3 is the follower. How to partition? Our goal with partitioning is to spread the data and query load evenly across nodes. If every node takes a fair share, then in theory, 10 nodes should be able to handle 10 times as much data and 10 times the read and write throughput of a single node, ignoring replication for now. If the partitioning is unfair, so that some partitions have more data query than others, we call it skewed. The presence of skew makes partitioning much less effective. In an extreme case, all the load could end up on one partition. So 9 out of 10 nodes are idle and your bottleneck is a single busy node. A partition with disproportionately high load is called a hotspot. What is a hot partition? The year, month, day partition is a hot partition. Whereas sensor, year, month, day partition is not a hot partition and maybe not a hot partition, but it's a lesser, hotter partition than the year, month, day partition. Range partitioning. So we are partitioning by a key range. Volume 1 contains words containing A and B. But volume 12 contains words starting with T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. We are talking of a print encyclopedia in this case. Simply having one volume per two letters of the alphabet would lead to some volumes being much bigger than others. In order to distribute the data evenly, the partition boundaries need to adapt to the data. Hash partitioning. A good hash function takes skewed data and makes it uniformly distributed. Say you have a 32-bit hash function that takes a string. Whenever you give it a new string, it returns a seemingly random number between 0 and 2 to the power 32 minus 1. Even if the input strings are very similar, their hashes are evenly distributed across that range of numbers. Disadvantages of hash function. Unfortunately, however, by using the hash of the key for partitioning, we lose a nice property of key range partitioning, the ability to do efficient range queries. Keys that were once adjacent are now scattered across all partitions so that their sort order is lost. In MongoDB, if you have enabled hash-based sharding mode, any range query has to be sent to all partitions. Range queries on the primary query, primary key are not supported by React, Couchbase or Voldemort. Cassandra strategy. Cassandra achieves a compromise between two partitioning strategies. A table in Cassandra can be declared with a compound primary key consisting of several columns. Only the first part of the key is hashed to determine the partition, but the other columns are used as concatenated index for sorting the data in Cassandra's SST tables. A query, therefore, cannot run search for a range of values within the first column of a compound key. But if it specifies a fixed value for the first column, it can perform an efficient rate scan over the other columns of the key. Secondary index partitioning by document. Let's first understand what is a secondary index. A secondary index usually doesn't identify a record uniquely but rather is a way of searching for occurrences of a particular value. Find all actions by user 123 
find all articles containing the word hogwash, find all cards whose color is red and so on. The secondary index by document. In this indexing approach, each partition is completely separate. Each partition maintains its own secondary indexes covering only the documents in that partition. It doesn't care what data is stored in other partitions. Whenever you write to the database to add, remove or update a document, you only need to deal with the partition that contains the document ID that you are writing. For that reason, a document partition index is known as a local index as opposed to a global index which is described in the next section. Thus, if you want to search for red cars, you need to send the query to all partitions and combine all the results you get back. This approach to querying partition database is sometimes known as scatter gather and it can make read queries on secondary indexes quite expensive. Even if you query the partitions in parallel, scatter gather is prone to tail latency amplification. Secondary index partitioning by term. Here, the red cars from all the partitions appear under color red in the index, but the index is partitioned so that the colors starting with the letters A to R appear in partition 0 and colors starting with S to Z is appearing in partition 1. The index on the make of the car is partitioned similarly with the partition boundary bit, bit being between F and H. The secondary index by term disadvantages. The advantage of the global term partitioned index or a document partitioned index is that it makes reads more efficient. Rather than doing scatter gather over all partitions, a client only needs to make a request to the partition containing the term that it wants. However, the downside of a global index is that writes are slower and more complicated because a write to a single document may now affect multiple partitions of the index. Every term in the document might be on a different partition on a different node. Rebalancing partitions, we'll now go into rebalancing partitions. Over time, things change in a database. The query throughput increases, so you would add more CPUs to handle the load. The dataset size increases, so you would add more disk and RAM to store it. A machine fails and other machines need to take over the failed machine's responsibilities. All of these changes call for data and requests to be moved from one node to another. The process of moving load from one node in the cluster to another is called rebalancing. How not to do it? The hash mod n. The problem with the modern approach is that if the number of nodes n changes, most of the keys will need to be moved from one node to another. For example, the hash key 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If you have initially 10 nodes, the key starts out on node 6. When you grow to 11 nodes, the key needs to move to node 3. When you grow to 12 nodes, it needs to move to node 0. Such frequent moves make rebalancing excessively expensive. Fixed number of partitions. Here, before rebalancing, we have four nodes in the cluster. Now we have 19 partitions. After rebalancing, we have also 19 partitions. But now there are five nodes. So what is happening for node 0, if we focus on it, P0, P8, P12 and P16 are in node 0, while P4 moves to the new node that is node 4. Node 1, here P1, P5, P13 and P17 remains in node 1, while P9 moves to the another node. Dynamic partitions. Create partitions dynamically. Each partition is assigned to one node and each node can handle multiple partitions like in the case of a fixed number of partitions. After a large partition has been split, one of its two halves can be transferred to another node in order to balance the no load.
In the case of age base, the transfer of partition files happens through HDFS, the underlying distributed file system. Dynamic partition fixed number of partitions per node. A third option used by Cassandra and Ketama is to make the number of partitions proportional to the number of nodes, in other words, to a fixed number of partitions per node. In this case, the size of each partition grows proportionally to the dataset size while the number of nodes remain unchanged. But when you increase the number of nodes, the partitions become smaller again. Since a larger data volume generally requires a larger number of nodes to store, this approach also keeps the size of each partition fairly stable. Request routing. The knowledge of which partition is assigned to which node is, is required for request routing. We discuss three different cases. The first case, the knowledge is in each of the nodes and therefore we choose a node. Say if we choose the node 0 randomly and the node 0 routes it to the appropriate node. In the second option, it is a routing tier which uh, has the knowledge of which partition is assigned to which node and it is doing it. And in the third case, the client has the knowledge of which partition is assigned to which node. For a practical example, we see that Zookeeper is, is being used to track the assignment of partitions to each node. Hope you like this lecture on partitions. Thank you. Bye.